Welcome back everyone. This is Susan So Creative, where it's only wrong when it doesn't work. I'd like to share with you today how to edit an existing design to create a whole new custom design and then use that to lay out multiple blocks in Pro Stitcher. Stick around and I'll show you what happens when you run out of backing fabric. I made this quilt using the Mini Wonderful Curves book from So Kind of Wonderful. Then I went looking through Pro Stitcher to find a design that would fit. Now what I've done is I've opened my design in Pro Stitcher and you can see I have this wonderful pattern that I'm going to be working on a clamshell quilt. And what I'm going to do is I just want the fan part of my design. I don't want this arc here. All right, so I'm going to start with the new start, new end. So I'm going to go ahead and tap it here, and you can see where I've moved my starting point to the middle of my curve, and I don't want it there, so I can move my machine along, and it'll bring my design back down. There you go. You can see where it's bringing my... And I'm just going to drop that right down Bring it all the way down to where my stop position is. Same place. Now I'm going to go ahead and to my modify. I'm going to select crop. And I'm going to select over here on the right hand side, new start, new end. And I've just created a new pattern that I want to use in my blocks. Now to position this, I'm going to go ahead and file save. Save and I want to set the select it, not the workspace. And honestly, I think what I'll do is I'll start over here and we're going to put it into this block first. I do need to flip it, so we're going to go to modify and we're going to go to rotate and I'm going to flip vertically. And then I'm going to reposition. So my starting point is say and there's my first design up on the screen. Now there are parts of my quilt where I don't have a full block. So before I actually start quilting, I'm going to mark off half my fan and eliminate one side of it to give me the half block vertical. And we're just going to go in here to crop, select edges, and select outside. Now I'm going to baseline. I'm going to remove the area, area tab, and click there, and then we'll save the design. Click undo, and undo, and undo again to remove the area, and we have our design back and complete. Now we'll divide the design in half horizontally and save both halves here. Same thing again. Click on area to corner. Get it about halfway. And we're going to go ahead back into modify and crop. We're not going to add edges to the top one. So click crop and do inside. Click baseline again. Then clear the area and save the design. After you save the design, click undo, bring the area back, undo the baseline, and then undo the crop. Now we're going to use edges and we're going to crop, but we're going to crop the outside. Then baseline. Remove the area and save the design again. I have two more parts of the design I have to cut and crop and save. I have to make a top quarter and a bottom quarter of the design. With all of these parts of individual pieces completed, I'm now ready to lay out my design for quilting. First design here. There's my original design. So I'm going to lay this out. I move that into the correct position, modify, reposition, 
and we're going to go start point. Then I can go to edit. We're going to copy. I'm going to position my next starting point and hit paste. Modify. We're going to rotate this and we're going to flip it vertically. Go back to reposition and move my start point up. And I probably will want to move this a little bit more. But this is how I'm going to lay out my designs as I go through. When I have part of a design that needs to be positioned, we're going to go back into uh, File. We're going to go to Workspace, Open. And I'm going to select like half my design. And open it. And then we're going to modify this. I'm going to rotate it. 45, 45, and we're going to reposition this so that it's over here. And you can see how I can continue to build my design all the way across my quilt. One thing you need to keep in mind as you're positioning your designs is that Pro Stitch will follow the sequence in which you bring your designs in and place them onto your quilt. So if I do placement for one, two, three, in this case, it's going to stitch in that order. Since you are still placing your designs one at a time, you have control over to exactly where they're going to be positioned and if they need to be resized or rotated or otherwise to make the quilt complete. Oh my gosh, have you ever run into this? I get down to the very bottom of my quilt. I'm just about ready to base this on and I'm feeling as it. Okay, I got enough batting, but look how close I'm going to be to my pins. I'm not going to be able to overstitch that at all. I'm not safe, don't feel safe about that. So I'm going to have to replace this, have an extra piece of fabric in here in order to finish quilting my quilt safely without having it run into the pins or whatever like that. How am I going to do this? Well, I came up with a real quick solution that I think might work. And what I've done is ripped off about three inches of fabric that I'm just going to place in here. Now I'm going to have to do it at the the frame and I'm going to stitch this on to this one. I'm going to have to do it by hand. I don't know any other way because I don't want to take the quilt off the frame. So we're just going to go ahead and undo this and I'm going to start stitching right here and just stitch that all the way across the bottom and then repin the backing to the quilt frame. Now that I've got that piece basted all the way across the bottom, and I only ran a single row on uh, with a regular needle, I can now go ahead and finish basting my quilt and get it all laid out. I'm going to save that piece, I think, in case I run into that situation again, or ha, before I run into that situation again, I'll put it on the bottom of the edge of my quilt. Now something else I've run into a situation here with this particular quilt too, is it seems to be stretching right at the, the outline or the cut edge uh, where I've pieced it all together. I'm going to show you a little tip uh, that I have found that really makes it convenient and will lay nice and flat for me. Is I'm going to take Danny Winkle, Danny Wrinkle Release, and I'm just going to spray this right along the bottom of the quilt where it has some fullness. Let that just sit for a bit, and I'm going to pat that back into position so that it's nice and flat for me. And I'm going to allow it to dry, and then I'll come back and finish quilting it. That will lay, lay this nice and flat. See how that's already pulling it back in just by smoothing it out? 
it's pulling it back in and it's going to lay nice and flat. Then I can baste it and get this whole edge nice and flat for me. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed today's subject. Stop by your dealer and check out any accessories that I've shown today. Until we see you next time on Susan So Creative, where it's only wrong when it doesn't work. Bye for now.